This video was brought to you by Indently.io, learning Python made simple. How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're going to be looking at or learning about the at wraps decorator in Python. And this is a decorator that we use inside our decorators to make sure we don't get any unexpected behavior. And I know it's quite ironic that we're required to use a decorator in our decorators, but that's just the way things are. So let's jump into it immediately by importing it from Funk Tools. So from Funk Tools, we're going to import, I seriously can't spell today, wraps. Then we're going to import a few types from the typing module. So from typing, we're going to import callable and the any type, since I like to use typing. And then we're going to import time because what we're going to do today is create a decorator that times any function we decorate. So first of all, let's create a function that we can time. And this function is going to be called expensive function because we don't know how long it takes. We just know that it takes a long time and that we want to time it. And inside here, we're going to add a doc string that says expensive function doc string. And then we're just going to add time.sleep for two seconds. And this is going to simulate an expensive calculation. Next, I'm going to create my if name is equal to main check and my main entry point. And all I'm going to do inside here is run this expensive function just to see that everything's working. And I should also print the result probably. So we'll just type in done. Now, when we run this, it should take two seconds and then it should output done. So our function works as expected. Now, all we have to do is create our decorator. So to do so, we're going to create something called get time, which is self-explanatory. And that's going to take a function, which can be any function as long as it's of type callable, which is literally anything that can be called. So any function should work here. And it's going to return to us a callable. Then let's insert a doc string here that says get the time of the given function. Something simple. And below that, we can create our wrapper, which is going to take the arguments and the keyword arguments of whatever function we insert. And it's going to return to us any because we don't really know what the function is going to return. So in this case, we're just going to return any. And here we're going to type in wrapper doc string. Now to make sure that this function works, we need to provide a start time of type float, which will be equal to time.performanceCounter. And inside, we're going to grab the result of the function, which can be anything, it can even be none. And that's going to equal the function that we insert along with its arguments. So arguments and keyword arguments, just in case it has any. And we need the end time, which will be of type float, and that will equal time.performanceCounter. So that's going to get the current time when we start running the function and after the function has returned a result. Then we can print that we ran the function, right, that has to be in curly brackets, the function dunder name in end time minus start time formatted to two decimal places, seconds. And I accidentally dragged this double quotation mark all the way to the end when it should just be around the function name. And what's important here is that we return the result so that we can actually get it here and that we return the wrapper. So that's what our decorator is going to look like. And I'm also going to format that. Anyway, let's move on to actually decorating our expensive function. So all we have to do here is type in at get time. And now every time we run this function, we're going to get the time it took to execute it back. So let's run that. And what you should notice in the console is that none type object is not callable. That's very interesting. And that's because I made a simple mistake here. And that is to call the wrapper directly when I should not have done that. So I'm going to remove those parentheses and I'm going to rerun this script. But this time, if everything goes well, we should get the total execution time for our expensive function. And this will actually work on any function we decorate. So you might be asking, what's the problem here? Why is it important that we include wraps in our decorator? And where do we even put it? Well, to explain why it's important, I'm going to print some information regarding our expensive function. So first of all, let's print our expensive function dot name. Then I'm going to duplicate that line a couple of times and print some other information such as the doc string of the expensive function. And we're also going to print the annotations. And since we don't really care about running the expensive function in this scenario, we're just going to comment that out. But as soon as we run this, what you're going to notice is that we're going to get some very random information back. And this is not the information that belongs to the expensive function. 
This is the information that belongs to the wrapper because in our decorator, we wrapped the expensive function. So Python thinks we want the information back from the wrapper, which is quite misleading because if you print the name or the doc string or the annotations, you'd probably expect to get the information back from the function that you referred to. And someday if this information ever becomes relevant or you want to use this from this function, it's going to be a huge pain to debug because we're not getting any errors from this. And that's because once we wrap the expensive function, it practically just turns into the wrapper because the wrapper is what's calling it. So now when we actually refer to this information, it refers to the wrapper. So Python's doing exactly what we told it to do. But as a developer, this is terrible. It's just not the information we are actually trying to get. So what's the solution? Well, the solution is to use another decorator to fix all of this. So let's go back to our decorator and right at the wrapper, we're going to type in at wraps. And what we need to do is wrap the original function. And just like that, it's going to tell Python that we still want this information, even if we're using a decorator on it, which also means that the next time we run our function, we're going to get the relevant information back, which is a huge win in terms of debugging. And that's really all you need to know about the at wraps function. It just makes sure that these attributes stay relevant. Anyway, do let me know in the comment section down below whether you're still confused about something or whether I could have explained something a bit better. I would love to hear about that in the comment section down below. But otherwise, with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.